Hi guys, I'm Katie and I'm the Advertising Director. I'm Layla and I'm the Healthcare Management Director. I'm Olivia, I'm the Event Coordinator. And I'm Victoria, I'm the Marketing Director. And today we're representing Test Okay, so let me ask you guys a question. Do any of you guys know about um, Gowdy's Ferry in South Dallas? No? Okay, so I'm going to let you know this area is typically known for um, abandoned dogs. So people use this area to drop off their unwanted pets along with their unwanted trash. So since about 2015, there's been about nine asylum dogs roaming this area in South Dallas. So just imagine for a second, they are starving, they haven't eaten in days, um, they've been abused, they've been beaten, neglected, maybe even tortured. Um, you know, with Texas, it's either really hot outside or it's really cold outside, and they've been taken to the middle of nowhere <coughs> with nothing around but dirt, trees, maybe other dogs that have been abandoned, maybe the remains of other dogs who were abandoned but didn't make it. They have nowhere to sleep, they have no food, no water, no comfort. They are out here in the middle of nowhere alone. So just think about that. And so here's a picture of a guy dropping off his dog in the middle of nowhere. So I want to tell you guys a story about Benny and Betty. So Benny is a dog who was abandoned at Downey's Ferry. Um, he is the dog in the top left. Let me tell you a little bit about him. His face is so swollen that he can't open one of his eyes. He has a major gash in his leg to where you can see his bone. He hasn't eaten in days. And it's January outside, guys. It is extremely cold outside right now. And he was dropped off at Dowdy's Ferry in a cardboard box. So there are some animal advocates that go out there every now and then, and you know they feed dogs out there, and they just check up, check up on them. And they saw um, Benny out there in a cardboard box. So they left him with a towel lined in the box, and you know they knew it wouldn't be much, but they were kind of hoping it would give him a little warmth since it was extremely cold outside. So the next time they came and checked on Benny, they realized that the gash in his leg was worse than what they thought, and they needed to give him, needed to give him medical attention immediately. I don't know if you guys have ever been around abandoned animals or abused animals, but you know when you make a move towards them or try and touch them, they typically flinch or they run away from you. Benny could not move at all, and you know they said he had a look in his face where he looked like he had just absolutely given up. So they were preparing to take Benny to the animal hospital when they realized he wasn't alone. So there is another dog, it's a chocolate lab, well dark. You know, she is a one-year-old chocolate lab and she was pretty much watching over Benny because he was so sick and so hurt. The animal advocates, they weren't able to take Betty right, or yeah, she was known as Betty, sorry. They weren't able to take Betty right then because they needed to give Benny of medical attention immediately. We didn't know how long it would take to get Betty in the car. Um, so they went and took Benny to the um, hospital and then they went back to pick up Betty. And then here's another picture of Betty. And she's over there as well. And there's like some trash around her as well. Go to the next slide. Do you guys know how much money it costs to give Benny just one night of medical attention? Just one night, no backups, like no second appointments or anything like that? over $2,000 just for one night of medical attention. And that's not even covering the emotional damage that this dog has. And he also had to have surgery on his leg because it was a bone deep um, injury, so they had to give him surgery. But as for Betty, she appeared in relatively good health, um, but they went ahead and did um, like tests and medical exams on her just to make sure there was no underlying health issues. So the good news is, after all that sadness, Benny and Betty were placed in a loving foster home so that that way they had a stable environment to really heal. And even better news is, is Benny was adopted earlier this year to a loving family, right over here. And then we got Betty, who is still in a loving foster home and is doing absolutely great. So after performing immense research, we found that over 5 million animals enter shelters in the United States. About 3,500,000 of those animals are euthanized annually. And of all the money that you spend on tax, more than $2 billion are used to collect, house, and kill and dispose of all these animals.
So some more animal abandonment statistics would be that 2% of the cats are returned to their owners, about 60% of the dogs are euthanized, 70% of the cats are euthanized, and about 25% of the animals are, of cats and dogs are adopted. So I'm pretty sure you guys can tell that shelters are very important, some of which is that it provides a place for, the, for us to educate you guys on the importance of shelters. It is a place where we can watch, work, vaccinate, and microchip pets before adoption. And the goal is to reduce the chance of the pets being returned. So we have decided to create an event called Pause for a Cause. And since Thanksgiving is a time to be thankful, this event will take place over the week of Thanksgiving on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So it's a three-day adoption event from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every single day at Clyborne Park. And we picked Clyborne Park because of the density of abandoned animals in Dallas. So at this event, we'll give families the opportunity to adopt pets, to um, receive any vaccinations for any of their animals that they have already, um, grooming services, and other fun activities that are interactive with families and animals. So this event, will consist of three tents. The first tent is our adoption tent. The second tent is our grooming and vaccination tent. And the third one is our food and activity tent. The adoption tent will consist of three shelters, three local shelters that Layla will go over a bit later. Um, and they'll come in and bring all of their animals. And families are given the opportunity to browse through the tent and see if they find an animal that fits with your family unit. Um, and there they can go through the adoption process and begin that. Um, the second tent, which is our uh, discounted vaccines and um, grooming services, will have PetSmart come in and bring one of their professional groomers and give you tips and tricks on how to create the space in between appointments longer um, so that way you can keep up with your pet and not have to use so much money on grooming services. And we'll also have a vet on site to administer vaccinations for any pet that may need it. All of the pets from the shelters are already wormed, vaccinated, and microchipped and all that. Um, the vaccinations are mainly targeted towards the pets that may need it. And our third tent um, is going to be our activity tent. So every single day we have something different. On Monday, we have a sample PetSmart training class. So PetSmart does offer training classes for adult and um, puppy, puppies. So we'll have a professional come in and teach a one hour session every single hour to see if a training session is right for you and for your pet. Um, and on Tuesday, we'll have an arts and crafts day, which is supposed to be a way for your children to interact with um, a new pet in your family. So we'll have a draw your pet competition and um, there'll be a first, second, and third place winner and each will receive a $100, a $50, or a $25 gift card to PetSmart, and that way you can buy all the things that you may need. We'll also have a caricature artist on site to bring, to draw pictures of you and your family, and it's just supposed to be a way for everyone to feel more acclimated and feel like a whole family unit. Um, on Wednesday, we'll have a pet restaurant. So we are catered by Food to Market Catering, which is a catering company in Dallas who will cater all three days. And on this day, since it's the day before Thanksgiving, we'll have a whole Thanksgiving feast for all of our animals, and that way you can help them indulge in any kind of food right before the holidays. And every single day, we'll be holding raffle prizes. So um, we'll have prizes from PetSmart, and one dollar will get you two raffles, and you can just write your name and phone number on the raffle and put it in the jar that you want which, on which prize you want, and we'll announce winners at the end of each day. Um, so this is happening from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. In addition to these events, we are also collecting any kind of monetary donations, food donations, or any items that we can give back to our shelters. Since shelters are nonprofit organizations, they rely heavily on donations and um, uh, food and items from the public. So as much as they give back to us, we also have to give back to them. So our flat adoption fee is $15, which is a relatively low price for any kind of animal, regardless of breed or um, uh, gender or you know state of health. Um, and each adoption comes with a standard package, which includes a package of dog or cat food, food, and water bowls. 
um, and that just comes with the adoption fee. And then we have a deluxe package, which is $25 on top of the fee, which comes with the standard package, plus a leash, a collar, um, a bed, and two toys. So in order to execute our idea, we have created a timeline with Cinema. For example, we would like to go up Clyde Warren Park in March because we have to do that six to eight months before our time. In April, we will call our partnering shelters. June through August, we will purchase our materials. We will contact our caterer and we will begin marketing. And listen above, we will follow all these other steps until our days of the drive so that we can execute it properly. And as for advertising, we plan on marketing our event through social media, like for example, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, and during the days of the event, we will have a different Snapchat filter every single day, so you can post about it on your story as well as the Dallas local story. So the three shelters that we decided to partner with are DFW Rescue Me, Operation Kindness, and Taking Home Pet Rescue. All three shelters are non-profit organizations that receive no government funding. They're all located in the DFW area and they have many corporate sponsors, some of which include Chewy.com, CBS11, Urban Paws, and uh, Small Dog Dallas. As you may assume, all three shelters have similar goals, which are to reduce the homeless overpopulation of pets in our area and to provide a caring and loving environment before they are adopted. As a result, their adoption process is extremely strict. First of all, to adopt a pet from these shelters, you have to be 21 or older, and you must have the consent and knowledge of all adults in your household. So the process begins with you filling out an adoption application. And once your application is approved by the shelter, then you're allowed to meet pets that might be a good match for you or that you're simply interested. Since all pets are placed in foster homes, you will have an opportunity to speak to the foster families as well. Uh, once you've decided on a pet, you will have to pass a home inspection. The purpose of the home inspection is actually to ensure that you are capable of providing a safe environment for your pet. If you pass the home inspection, then your pet will be placed in your home for a trial period. The trial period is usually 10 days. After the trial period, if you're still sure that you want to keep the pet, the adoption process will be finalized. However, if there is any reason in the future that you are not able to take care of your pet, the shelters want you to give the back to them. So all of your shelters will bring their own pets to our event with a uh, hopes of finding a loving and caring home for them. And each of the shelters each shelter will have their own food if you would like to talk to them or ask about any additional So UGD Paws and UGD Heat are two clubs that have agreed to help us coordinate this event. They host fundraisers and do volunteer, volunteer work to raise awareness about the uh, overpopulation of abandoned pets in our area. Um, we're also counting on them to attract more people, especially UTD students who attend our event. As you can see, we grouped our finances into three categories, which are food, decor, and other, which makes our total cost $4,600. We would like to thank you for your time and patience, and now we're open for questions.